What's up everybody? So today we'll be talking about classes, so let's get straight into it. So Python is an object-oriented programming language, and this essentially means that pretty much everything in Python is an object. So like a string, a list, um, any of like the data types that we've used, like all of those are objects because they have like properties and methods. So properties refer to like data that's associated with the object, and methods refer to uh, functions that are specific for for the uh, object. So a class is like an object constructor, uh, which basically is like a blueprint for producing things. A class is essentially just a user-defined data type. So to create a class, you first start with the class keyword, and then you follow that with the class name. And when naming the class, you want the first letter of each word to be capitalized. So if I wanted the class, if I wanted my class name to be my class, then that would look something like this: It'd be my class. And we follow that with the colon, and then on the next line we have to indent four spaces. And then anything underneath the indention will be specific for the class. And this is where we can define our properties and our methods. So as a basic example, we can just set x equal to 1 inside of our class. And now, outside of the indention, now we can create an instance of our object. So to do this, we can just first set a variable, p1 is equal to my class. And then we have to do the parentheses. So this is going to create a, a my class object and assign it to p1. Now p1 is an object of type my class. Just to show you all, if we print the type of p1 and run our code, you see that we get class my class. So instead of just printing the type of class, sometimes we'd want to access methods or properties. So to access methods and properties, we can use the dot operator. And so for example, if we want to access the x value, then we can say, uh, we'll, we'll print this out, we'll print p1 dot x. So now this is going to look inside of the my class definition, and it's going to look for the x property. And then since x is 1, it should print 1. Just to show you all, see we get 1. So this is an example of a class in its most simple form. Most of the time when we create a class, we want to have an init method, which stands for initialize or initialization. And the init method will run whenever we create an object of that class. So I'm gonna create an, a new class that has an init method. So we'll create a class called person. So we can use the init method to assign values to object properties um, or do other operations um, when the object is created. So for example, if we want to have an init method here, we would first say define underscore, it's double underscore, so we need two underscores, and then init, and then another two underscores, and then the parentheses. In parentheses, we first have to specify self. So you can write whatever, but this is just a reference to the object itself, and that's always going to be the first parameter. And then the second parameter is going to be uh, basically like your argument, or basically like a parameter to this class. So when you create the class, sometimes you'll want to pass data in, and this will allow us to do that. So if we want, say, like each person to have a name or like an age, then we can have those in the init method. And then we'll say self.name is equal to name, and self.age is equal to age. Now let's create a person object. So we'll say like p1 is equal to person, and now we have to, inside the parentheses, we have to specify a name and an age. So name, say Harrison, and then age, we'll say 19. And now we can use the dot operator to access these properties, just like we did before. So for example, we can print p1.name, and then we'll print p1.age. Now let's run our code, and you see we get Harrison and 19. And this is cool because we can have multiple persons. So we could have p2 equal to p And then if we, all we have to do, instead of calling p1, if we call p2, then it'll give us the properties of p2. And now we get your name in 10. So essentially the init method is the constructor for the object. It's where you can define all the stuff that you want when the object is created. So as we said earlier, classes can have methods, and methods are just functions that are specific to that class. So if we want a function that's specific for the person class, for example, we might want to have a function that prints out the person's name and their age. So to do that, we can say 
uh, define, and then we just need a name for our function, say like print person. And then the first argument again is going to be self because we need a reference to the current instance of the object. So just having self here will allow us to refer to these self properties. So we'll start off by saying print hello plus self dot name. And then we'll have another print statement that says your age is and again we'll say plus self dot age. And since self.age is going to be an integer, we have to we have to use type casting to cast it to a string. So to do that we can say str. And now this will just give us the string version of self.age because self.age will most likely be an integer. So now instead of having these print statements here, instead we can just call p1.print person and then parentheses since it's a function and then if we run our code, so as you can see, we get, hello Harrison, your age is 19. And this would work for any person. So we could have multiple persons, and if we just call that person dot print person, then it'll print that person with their, with their um, properties instead of ours. Lastly, I wanna show that you can modify an object's properties after you've already created it. So for example, we could say p1.name is equal to um, new name. And now if we say p1.printPerson, now you see our name has actually changed. So we can actually update or modify um, an object's properties after it's already been created. And instead of modifying an object outside of the class, we can actually have a method that modifies that property. So instead of updating the name in here, we could, we could have a function say like, or a method, uh, so we could call it like set name and then the first argument is going to be self because we need a reference to the current object and we'll just say self.name is equal to and then since this is a function uh, and we, we're going to be passing in a new name that's going to be the, the second argument so the second argument is going to be like uh, new name so self.name is equal to new name and now instead of having this here, we can say p, uh, p1.set name. And then in parentheses, we just pass in whatever name we want. Like So now you see it still works uh, the same. But now we have a method that actually modifies the property. So I hope that you can begin to see the utility of classes. They basically like allow us to create our own data types, which is super cool. For example, if we wanted to create a a car class. And each car might have like a make, a model, you know, a manufacturer year, a color, a price. Um, for example, we could have a, a class for a dog, and you know, some of the some of the properties might be like the breed, the age, maybe the name, maybe the weight. So classes are awesome because instead of just having a bunch of random variables, we can just have one variable that stores everything that we need. Objects and object-oriented programming is just really cool. So that about wraps it up. Um, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.